Good evening, and welcome to Storytime with Angelina. Today we're going to learn about something that some of you might think is creepy, crawly. It's called a spider. And this is from the Life Cycle series, all about animals and insects and plants. Written by Holly Duick, edited by Christy Holmes, designed by Daniel Jones. So what is a life cycle? All animals, plants, and humans go through different stages of their life as they grow and change. This is called a life cycle. Here is an example of the human life cycle. We don't start as adults, we start as a baby, and we grow into a child and then an adult. So what is a spider? A spider is an arachnid. They have eight legs and a body made of two segments, or parts. Can you imagine what it would be like to have eight legs and only two parts of your body? A head and maybe your tummy? <laughs> Their bodies make silk, which they use to build webs, and it comes out of their bottom. There's a spider web there. Eggs. A female spider usually lays her eggs in spring. She wraps her eggs in a sack made of silk to protect them from predators. So here's the egg sack, and she doesn't want any of the other animals to eat her babies. That's what a predator would be. A single egg sack may be the home to just a few eggs, or a few hundred. This is because different spider species lay different numbers of eggs. So there are lots of different kinds of spiders. And when you see two spiders that look alike and one is larger than the other, usually the one that's bigger is the female spider. Spiderlings. After a few weeks, the eggs will hatch. Young spiders are called spiderlings, and they will crawl their way out of the egg sac. Before they hatch, spiderlings feed themselves by eating the yolk inside the, their egg. So if you've ever seen a chicken egg, use it for cooking, there's a yellow part inside. We call that the yolk, and then there's a white part as well. So just like a chicken, the spiders, when they're in the egg, they will eat part of the inside of the egg to live off of while they're still in the egg. Once spiders hatch, they must learn to hunt for insects. Some spiderlings stay close to their mother once they have hatched. The female wolf spider here carries her spiderlings on her back for 10 days after they hatch. Can you count the spiderlings? Oh, I see the little bottoms. There's a lot on her back. Some spiderlings do something called ballooning. This is where they shoot silk into the air, which catches the wind and allows them to be blown away from their mother. It's kind of like someone that uses a parachute and jumps from a plane. They just kind of glide down and the wind carries them different directions. But spiders do this with the thread that they make, the silk. Growing spiderlings. As spiderlings grow, they shed their hard outer layer called an exoskeleton because a skeleton is on the inside and this is on the outside. So exoskeleton. They shed this over and over again and it's called molting. They're not the only critter to do this either. Snakes also shed their skin. After molting, a spiderling's body is very weak. However, they don't stay like this for long because a bigger, harder exoskeleton begins growing straight away. Most spiders molt between five to ten times as they grow. Spiders never get caught in their own web because they move across it on non-sticky threads. So some of the threads in their webs, they don't get stuck to. 
Adult spiders will live in their webs, which they use to catch their prey. Spiders make their webs with a sticky silk, which traps insects that fly into it. Now, most spiders do live in webs, but jumping spiders are hunters, and they don't make webs. Adult female spiders begin looking for a mate, a sweetheart, <laughs> so they can lay eggs of their own. Male jumping spiders have bright colors and long hair to attract females. So usually when you see spiders of the same species, the male um, will often be colorful to attract and impress the female. You look so soft and fluffy. And they are not this big. <laughs> Scary spiders. Of course, we have an example of Australia. Lots of the world's biggest spiders are found in Australia. When you're afraid of spiders, this is called arachnophobia. So, some people are afraid of spiders in Australia because when the spiders are doing the ballooning, the little spiderlings, and they go woo through the air with their spider web, there's so many spiders that do this at the same time in some parts of Australia that it covers the ground and it looks almost like snow because of all the spider web. That's a lot of spiders. So there are a lot of people that would be very surprised and maybe afraid if they woke up to find that. Looking for food. In an orb web, all the threads are connected. This means that when an insect touches it, the whole web shakes and the spider knows it has caught its prey. Funnel webs are often built between tree branches or blades of grass. The web's owner waits for insects to get caught in the web's sticky sides. See, it's shaped like a funnel. Or a tunnel. <laughs> World record breakers. So the largest spider ever found was a goliath bird-eating spider. Its leg span was 28 centimeters wide. That's about the size of a dinner plate. That's a big spider. And fun facts about bird-eating spiders, they actually rarely eat birds. They will usually eat um, like frogs or snakes or rats and lots of insects. Of course, spiders love insects. But they do occasionally eat small birds. Now, most spiders are harmless, but some can kill, and some can hurt if they bite you. The record for the most venomous spider is held by the male Sydney funnel web spider. He's in Australia. Now, spiders are fun to play with and all, but it's true. Some of them are dangerous. So if you see a spider and you don't know what kind it is, you shouldn't touch it. You shouldn't hold it in your hands. Not until you know if it's safe to do so. That doesn't mean you should be afraid of spiders, but you should always be cautious when dealing with something that you don't understand. Here's the life cycle of a spider. First, the female lays her eggs. Then the eggs hatch and spiderlings come out. Then the spiders molt until they're fully grown and the adult spiders build their own webs or go off to hunt and find another mate and start over from scratch with the eggs. Let's get exploring. Spiders live all over the place, but lots of spiders make their webs in dark places like sheds and attics. Why not see if you can find some? There you go. Venom. So this book is excellent for children because you get to learn all about the critters, but also it has a lovely glossary that explains these new words in bold. And don't be afraid of Australia, guys. <laughs> Just because there are critters there that are not very safe to be around doesn't mean that the whole place is scary. I hope you enjoyed this and learned a bit about spiders. Fun fact for you as well, spiderlings, the ones that 
bundle up there we go. right here if you see a big mess of little spiderlings together then if you take a stick and very very gently tap the center of the bundle of all the little spiderlings they will scatter like this all around and then they'll gradually come back together in the middle <laughs> but be very gentle.